Hello and welcome to Limitless Life. I am Larry Hutton and I am just so thrilled to be able to bring you the word of life today. The word out of the Bible, out of the mouth of the Lord Jesus Christ, a living Jesus, a living Lord. He wants you healthy in your physical body. He wants you wealthy in your finances. He wants you full of peace and joy in your emotions where you are stable emotionally. You don't have bad temper and anger problems. You don't allow depression. You don't allow hurt feelings. You don't allow guilt and shame. Jesus wants you free in every area of life. And that's what we're all about, taking the limits off. I'm just so, so thankful the Lord told me to call this program Limitless Life because we get to take the limits off. The sky is not the limit. Heaven is the limit. God's kingdom is the limit. There's, there, it's, it's limitless for us. Unlimited potential in God, in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so that's why we're always talking about things that are relevant for today. What do we need today? You need money today. So what does the Bible say about that? You need physical health in your body today. So what does the Bible say about that? You need uh, mental stability. You need a, a peace of mind, a, a, uh, a freedom from depression, discouragement, bad temper, and all those things. So we see what the Bible says about that. You need a stable, good, heavenly marriage. What does the Bible say about that? There's a lot of things the Bible says about all these different areas. And if we, if we learn what God says in the Word of God, it's His ways, and His ways are so much higher than man's ways. So I'm telling you, it, it pays to, to uh, take the limits off your life, and I'm just honored to be able to be with you. Many of you join us every program, and I'm thankful for that. Many of you then after we broadcast live, then you, uh, we put them on YouTube, our Larry Hutt Ministry YouTube channel. You may be watching it from there. And then after that, I put them on different social media. You may be watching on the other social medias. Well, however, maybe you've gone to our website and our website, you're looking at this program after we have recorded and it's on our website. However you're watching it, it's going to just help you take the limits off your life. It's going to help you elevate yourself where you are now mounting up with wings as eagles, like God said. God wants you soaring with the eagles, man. And uh, he, He's called you an eagle. He's called you an overcomer. He's called you more than a conqueror. He's called you a victorious one because you're in Christ. Now, of course, before I was in Christ, then I didn't have all that promise and blessing available. But once I accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, then all of that became available. That's when I got healed of an incurable disease. That's when the Lord taught me about money out of the Bible. And you know, God's so, so much smarter than man when it comes to money. He did create all the stuff, you know. He created the diamonds and the, and the rubies and the gold and the silver, and He created all the wealth in the earth. So uh, since He's the God of all wisdom, He is smarter than any man on the subject. I just didn't know that for years. Finally, I started learning what God said about money in the Bible. And it was amazing how God just took Liz and I, my wife, up and up and up. We kept paying things off, paying things off. Paid off our million dollar Larry Hutt ministry property, paid off our home, paid off our vehicles. And so now it's been many years we've been out of debt. I like that. That's the kind of style God wants us to live. And of course, every area, not just money, but every area of life, God wants us living in abundance. He wants you to have abundance of love for other people. He wants you to have abundance of peace and joy in your feelings and emotions where you control how you feel. In fact, that's the, that's the very series that we're doing right now in case you're tuning in for the first time. We started a series and uh, we ended last week our sixth week in the series. So we're actually beginning our seventh week. This is actually gonna be our 31st program on the subject of what I've called uh, the way to control your feelings. The Bible calls it the way of peace, God's way of peace. And so we looked at a number of scriptures that said the way of peace. And uh, I've titled it the way to control your feelings because peace is uh, a fruit of the born again, re recreated human spirit. The Holy Ghost brings God's peace in you and it's fruit. It's not seasonal fruit, it's year round fruit. It's 24 hour fruit that's in you. Once, once you get born again, the Holy Spirit brings God's peace in you. So you have this peace all the time. And then joy, another uh, fruit that God brings inside you when he moves inside you to dwell in you. And those affect your feelings. When you have peace of mind, it controls your feelings. When you have joy of mind, when you're, when you're thinking happy and thinking glad and thinking joyous, then your feelings are in a good state. 
and that's the way God wants us to control our feelings, we actually get to choose. You've heard me say, if you've been on the program, if you haven't been, you may not have heard me say this, but I've been saying for a long time now, I don't ask Larry Hutton how I feel. I tell Larry Hutton how I feel. Yeah, in other words, I don't allow uh, circumstances, I don't allow people's actions toward me to dictate how I feel. You're not going to tell me how I feel. I'm going to tell me how I feel. I don't let my feelings tell me how I feel because you get out of bed some mornings and you just don't feel like it's going to be a good day. But when you choose life, when you choose blessing, when you choose peace and joy over the feeling that you're experiencing at the moment, it changes everything because God's fruit of peace and God's fruit of joy, they are so much more powerful than a fruit of depression or a fruit of discouragement or a fruit of anger and a fruit of hurt feelings, a fruit of guilt or shame. All of those negative emotions are not anywhere as powerful as God's positive emotions of peace and joy. Everything about God is more powerful than anything the world can throw at you. Any, any, part, of God, any part of God's kingdom, any fruit of God is more powerful than the devil's fruit. And the devil's fruit is discouragement and depression. So God doesn't want you partaking of depression. That's the devil's fruit. Man, I'm telling you what, this is some good stuff. I'm already saying some things I haven't said before, but you know, I always believe God before I come on the air. In fact, the same thing when I go in the pulpit at a church to minister, I'm always believing God. God, think through my mind, speak through my lips, help me to say things that people need to hear. And I've never thought about the fact that depression and bad temper and all those negative emotions are fruit of the devil. Now, Peace and joy, self-control, those are fruit of the Holy Spirit. They're fruit of God. So you have fruit of God and you have fruit of Satan. You have fruit of the light, kingdom of light. You have fruit of the kingdom of darkness. Which, which fruit do you want manifested in your life? You say, well, brother, I just can't help the way I feel. Yes, you can. And that's the whole purpose of why we've been getting into the Word of God all these weeks. If you haven't been joining us, man, go back and listen to the six weeks prior to this and then listen to this week. We're going to see if we can wrap it up by the end of the week. But we need these things so that we can release the fruit of peace that's in us and the fruit of joy that's in us so that we can release it every minute of the day, every hour of the day for the uh, rest of the year and then for the next year and next year and next year and the rest of our life. When I learned this years ago, nobody taught me this. I was not taught this by man. I was taught this by the Lord Jesus Christ when He came and taught me this years ago. Uh, you can listen to my testimony on uh, Sid Roth years ago. He had me on It's Supernatural to share the testimony. But when the Lord taught me this, it, it just changed my life forever. And uh, I never heard it in a, a CD or a, a recording. I never heard it from somebody from a pulpit. I never read it in a book. I got it directly from Jesus. And I, but of course now Jesus and the Word are one. So when Jesus showed me in the Word what to do, I just started doing what the Word says. I didn't have to see a, uh, physically see Jesus to do what the Word said. I've got the Word of God. It's a more sure word of prophecy than you actually seeing Jesus with your eyes. And so I have this sure word of prophecy, this sure word of God that shows me how to live in peace and joy 24-7, 365, and now I've been doing it for years. So I'm a living, walking testimony of the word. That's what, if you read, if you read Hebrews 11, 5 and 6, where it talks about Enoch, it said before he got translated, he had this testimony, Hebrews 11, 5. Uh, but that, that he pleased God. But without faith, in the next verse, Hebrews eleven six, 6, without faith, it's impossible to please him. This, that word testimony uh, in, the, in the Greek language, it's talking about um, a testimony where people see your life, uh, hear the things you say, see your life, and, but they're seeing fruit being produced in your life. And so then they tell others, man, God must really like Enoch. That's what it was actually saying there in Hebrews 11, 5 and 6. Man, God, look what God's done uh, through brother Enoch. And then, of course, he ends up getting translated and they think, whoa, can't even find his body anywhere, you know. So I'm a living testimony. If Enoch could be a living testimony... Come on, why can't I, right? If, Lena, if Enoch could be a living testimony, his faith, and we're talking about people under the Old Covenant, we're talking about people that were not 
living in a covenant that is good as the one you and I live under. We live under a better covenant established on better promises. Man. So let's get back into what the Bible calls the way of peace. And that means the way that you control how you feel, the way you uh, don't allow depression to come and you don't allow discouragement and you don't allow bad temper. You don't allow all these negative emotions. So let's go back to our main text of Isaiah 53 verses four and five. It says, surely he, Jesus has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed, or with his stripe blow or bruise we are healed. It's actually singular, that word stripe. So Jesus, in verse 4, bore our griefs and carried our sorrows. Doesn't grief sound like an emotion? Doesn't just sound like it, it is one. <laughs> Doesn't it sound like a feeling? It doesn't just sound like a feeling. It is a feeling. When you're in grief, that affects the way you feel, your feelings. When you're in sorrow, uh, it affects the way you feel. Now, we studied these words out. Of course, when you're studying the subject of divine healing, you find out these words grief and sorrows in the Hebrew also mean sickness, disease, and pain. But if you look at the word grief and sorrow in the Hebrew, it doesn't just mean sickness and disease and pain. It also means anguish and turmoil. It really refers to every kind of negative emotion from depression, bad temper, guilt, shame, frustration, worry, stress. Every negative emotion is covered in these two Hebrew words. So it lets us know that Jesus, when he was on the cross, and verse 6 said, God laid on him the iniquity of us all, that all of this was included being laid on Jesus, that Jesus actually took our place on the cross, bore our sin, and with that sin, sickness was included, every negative emotion was included, in fact, every curse was included. Remember Galatians 3.13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. He was made a curse with every curse that came on mankind as a result of Adam's sin. The first Adam sinned and every curse came into humanity. The last Adam, Jesus is referred to as the last Adam, he bore all of the curses so that the last Adam would fix it back up for humanity. So now humanity is back in a right relationship with God. And now we don't have to have these curses operating in our life. They're going to come. We found out already. We studied out a number of verses, found out they're going to come, but you don't have to yield to them. You don't have to allow them to stay. We found out when Jesus did this, that he actually took the power out of all of the curses. He took the power out of sickness to keep you sick. He took the power out of depression to make you depressed. He took the power out of lack and poverty so that to make you poor. He took the power out of all that stuff. So when it comes, and it's going to come because the thief does come to steal, kill, and destroy. When it comes, you can submit to what God said, like Jesus said, I submit to God and you speak. It is written and you resist the curse. You resist the depression. You resist the bad temper, whatever it is you're resisting, and it has to flee from you. Praise God. So we ended last program over in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Let's go back over there. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 7, where we were talking about this famous verse. So many people have tried to use this verse and it hasn't worked for them. And there's a reason we're going to get into that. 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all your care on him, for he cares for you. And so you've heard preachers probably, and maybe you've read or you've seen things where it says, you just need to cast your care on Jesus. You just need to cast those care on God. Quit work. Be, qu don't be a worry wart anymore. Quit being a world-class worrier and just cast those cares. Or quit being stressed out. I know you're at a stressful job, but just quit being, just quit allowing stress. Just quit, you know, cast that stress. Or quit being depressed. Cast that depression. Just cast your cares so that you're not all mad and uptight and everything. Cast your cares. And so people have tried to do that without knowing how. And then the cares are back on them within a couple of minutes, sometimes a few seconds, but sometimes it's a couple minutes or, or an hour later, all of a sudden they find themselves stressed again. They find themselves worried again. They find themselves mad and flying off the handle again. They cast the care and then the care came back on them and they didn't know that the thief does uh, come, but, but he, just because you cast him out 
doesn't mean he's not coming back. <laughs> you read the scripture, you find out he's a, a persistent booger. <laughs> yeah, he's going to keep trying to come at you. But that's all right. It's no big deal if you learn to overcome, that you learn that you are an overcomer and the way that you snatch the victory out of every situation that's trying to overcome you is by having faith in what Jesus did for you. And so Jesus already defeated depression, discouragement. We already looked at a lot of verses concerning that. We don't have time to go back over those. But 1 Peter 5, 7 does say to cast your cares. So people try and do it. The cares come back on them. They try and do it. The cares come back on them. And most people then just get weary of well-doing. And they, they, they give up and quit. They get their eyes off of Jesus. Remember Hebrews 12, uh, 3 and 4, looking unto Jesus, the one who starts your faith and ends your faith and helps you all the way through your faith, continue to walk by faith. He says, consider him, uh, what he's already done for you at the cross, lest you get wearied and faint in your mind. So we have to keep our eyes on Jesus. Casting all your care is not done by you being strong in yourself and the power of your might. And that's why people have failed. They've tried to be strong in themselves and the power of their might. The Bible tells us in Ephesians 6, be strong in the Lord and the power of His, the Lord's might. Well, if God tells us to be strong in Jesus' might, then we can. We must have His might in order to be strong in it. Well, of course, if you are in Christ. Remember 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, old things passed away, behold, all things become new. So I'm in Christ and Jesus is in me, Christ in me, the hope of glory. So if I'm in him and he's in me, then okay, yeah, I do have his power. So I can be strong in the Lord, in Christ. I can be strong in Jesus. Mm. Boy, that's good preaching, Brother Larry. Thank you. I'll just go ahead then. <laughs> Casting all your cares. So, so there's a key here why many have tried doing this and, and ended up failing. Let me share something the Lord. When the Lord was teaching me how to live in divine peace and joy 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, when he was teaching me, he asked me, he brought me to this verse, casting all your care. He had me read it, 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all your care on him because he cares for you. And then the Lord asked me this. He said, what is the first word of this verse? Well, I had the King James Version, casting all your care on him for he cares for you. And so I looked at it again when he asked me, what's the first word in this verse? I looked at it and I said, well, it's the word casting. And the Lord asked me, he said, would you start a sentence or a thought with the word casting. And I thought for a moment, I thought, no, I wouldn't start a word with the word casting. He said, neither would I. <laughs> he said, why don't you read the context so you can talk, so you can see what I'm talking about when I say casting. And so of course I read the whole chapter, but when I got to chap uh, verse five, at the end of verse five, it makes this statement, God resist the proud and gives what to the humble? Give, look at the verse, G gives grace. This is a chapter, the same chapter, verse number five. So 1 Peter 5, 5, God resists the proud and gives what? Grace to the humble. Hmm. So in order for grace to flow in our lives, whether it's a grace of righteousness, you know, where you get saved from sin or grace of health, where you get saved from sickness, or grace of peace and joy where you get saved from mental problems and, and being on an emotional roller coaster, or whether it's a, a grace of a, a heavenly marriage, you know, where you get free from a hellish marriage, whatever grace it is that you need, God gives it to humble people. Said he resists the proud. So if we're all about self, that's pride. Sometimes people think pride is only just when people are always thinking, I'm the greatest, there's nobody like me. You know, they think that's pride. Well, it is pride, but you're going to see here in a minute, it's a whole, a whole, there's a whole different part of pride that most people don't know about. God resists the proud, gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore. So now he starts talking about, okay, you want grace to flow in your life? And by the way, for by grace are you saved and that word saved, if you look at Ephesians 2, 8, for by grace are you saved? And, and, and verse 5 of that chapter as well. By grace are you saved? That word saved is saved, delivered, preserved, protected, healed, made whole. It includes 
every area of your life, not just spiritually, spiritually, physically, financially, emotionally, maritally, socially, every area of your life is saved by grace and it's released. His grace is released through faith. So you have to find out what God says about your different areas of life and then submit to that. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, this verse says. So if we want grace flowing, then we're going to have to humble ourselves. And God, it says, God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand so that he can lift you up. In fact, this word exalt, if you look up this word exalt, it, it, it doesn't mean uh, God coming up to you, patting you on the back and say, you are the best, man. You, I'll tell you what, you are, you are the example that everybody needs to follow. You are awesome. You are one, that's not what this word exalt means. This word exalt, if you look up the Greek word, it a actually means to elevate up above or to lift up out of. That's what the Greek word means. So God wants to elevate you up above or lift you up out of something. And he goes on to tell you, he said, listen, God resists the proud, gives grace to the humble, humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God so that he can lift you up in your due time, which your due time is now, casting all your cares. What? Oh, oh wait. I, yeah, I, I see that, Brother Larry. Humble yourselves by casting all your care. Because the care, which is the worry and the stress and the depression and the bad temper, is what weighs you down in life. It's what brings you down to the pit. It's what causes you to be overcome and end up failing and, and wanting to give up and quit and just go to heaven. This is what people do when they don't cast their cares. But he said, God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, by casting all your care, which then he's telling me when I don't cast my care, I am in pride. That's why you always have to interpret Scripture in light of Scripture. See, we did an injustice to people, the body of Christ, for years by taking verse 7 and saying, you know, God tells us to cast our care, uh, so you just need to, need to do it, you know. Uh, you know, if it comes back on you, that's okay. Just cast it again and just keep casting, just keep casting, just keep casting. That's like saying, you know, just go ahead and keep getting into pride and, and then get into humility and go ahead and get into pride again. Just, it's okay. And go ahead and get in humility again. Oh, yeah, it's okay. Get, get in pride again. No, 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 no. God said he resists the proud and gives grace. You know what this grace does? It empowers you to cast the care and not allow the cares to come back. Oh, they're going to come back and tempt you, but you don't allow them to stay because you stay in humility. Man, this is so good. God resists the proud, gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves by casting all your care. Why? God cares for you. See, God knows that you cannot allow that care to stay and walk in victory at the same time. You cannot allow that depression to stay and walk by faith and please God. You can't do it. God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. So actually, casting our cares is an act of humility, which means then it's also an act of faith because God gives what to the humble? Grace, and we receive grace through faith. Grace flows through the channel of faith. Faith is what releases grace. So humbling ourselves and not allowing the... the depression or the bad temper or the guilt or shame or frustration or worry or stress, not allowing those feelings to stay is actually humbling ourselves. Man, that is so powerful. So he says, um, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God so that God can lift you up out of all that junk, casting all your cares. This is how he tells you to humble yourself, casting all your care on him, casting all your care on him. I'll tell you what, this is so good. We're going to get right back into this next program. I'm going to show you some things you may never have seen before. In fact, God showed me something I had never heard before, and I never thought about pride versus humility before, and it's going to help you cause God's grace of peace and God's grace of joy to, to stabilize your emotions so that you start choosing how you feel rather than your body, hormones, chemicals, or other people's actions choose how you feel. You choose how you feel. Remember, I'm teaching this out of my book, Internal Affairs. 
Uh, of course, God always has me say more, so there'll be more, but there'll be probably stuff in the book that I don't share on the television program. So Internal Affairs is the book. If you want to get it, you can download the, the uh, MP3 teaching if you want, or you can get it on our CDs free from me. So go to the website, order those things. They'll, uh, they'll have that on the screen for you as well, but they're all available. And then I just wanted to take just a minute and once again, thank, thank those of you uh, we call you power partners when you support us monthly. So I just want to take a moment and say thank you from the bottom of my heart because we are reaching people all over the world because of your support. You pray for us and then you send in finances and the finances help me pay to get the programs out there on social media and television everywhere. And because of your unselfish act, all the other people that are watching that haven't hooked up as partners yet, they're actually getting blessed because of you. And I believe you're getting credit for every one of their blessings too. And uh, so thank you for joining us. If you're not a partner and you wanna become part of the Power Team, Power Partner Team, man, just hook up as a partner. And we'll hook up as a team together and reach the world. Well, we'll pick up next time. We're out of time, so love you. Have a Jesus-filled day. Bye-bye. If you would like to schedule Larry Hutton to speak at your church, event, or conference, go to larryhutton.org and choose Contact Us from the menu bar or call 1-888-887-WORD. Do you ever feel like you're riding a non-stop emotional roller coaster through life? Do you want to stop the seemingly endless ups and downs and rounds and rounds? Then it's time to learn what God has to say about getting your feet and your emotions back on solid ground. It's all too easy to let life's events, experiences, and circumstances dictate how we feel, speak, and act. But God gave us a much better way to live. Larry Hutton's life-changing book, Internal Affairs, and CD series, Free From Me, will give you the Bible answers and show you how to keep every negative emotion under complete control, all the time, in every situation. You will learn how to overcome all your negative emotions and live in peace all the time. To order Eternal Affairs and Free From Me, go to LarryHutton.org or call 888-887-9673. Join us again for Limitless Life with Dr. Larry Hutton, where you'll get practical teaching from God's Word that you can apply to your everyday life. Go to LarryHutton.org to watch this program and many others. You'll find special offers and resources to help you thrive in life. You can check on Larry and Liz's schedule and join them at a meeting near you. That's LarryHutton.org or you can call 888-887-WORD.